Another speaker here at Telecom's World Middle East has been Mr. Sharat Chandra, who's the president and CEO of GTL. And uh, Mr. Chandra, you were talking about outsourcing. How important is that for the industry? I think um, this is the next revolution that is going to happen. If we don't take this seriously, today the concept of cost is largely seen in terms of acquiring the product. And that is a misrepresentation of the re reality as it unfolds. It has to be seen in the context of total cost of ownership. And therefore, when you try as an operator to manage everything on your own, you end up creating an organization that is larger than you need. You end up getting them trained in technologies that over a period of time you can walk past by. And you use tools and services that decay over a period of time. So unless you keep investing in all of that, which is going to be time consuming and painful, you have a choice to make and that is towards outsourcing. Where it is someone else who is more competent, has greater economies of scale, his, has the fitment of his business in fulfilling that need that you have and has the competence that you don't. And how does it help a company? You know, what kind of things can they outsource? This was a debate that happened in the industry many years ago. If I go back a decade, then the prevalent operator model was everything by me for me. And today, we are seeing that there are elements of work and, and elements of activities that are outsourced happily. Clearly, deployment is a part of that. So someone else can do that deployment. And now, even the more complex work of technology-related radio engineering designing, capacity planning, performance management, program management, optimization, operations and maintenance. All of that is being outsourced. How do you know who to choose? How do you know who to work with? From an organization perspective, our growth has been based on two fundamental principles of being vendor agnostic and technology agnostic. So those customers who primarily have a complementing fitment into this structure are our customers. And the good part is that whether it is a vendor or an operator, it's a non-threatening presence that we provide. So, if I were to choose, and I don't think I will come to that stage, because all operators and all equipment vendors are a part of our valuable customer base. All. Uh, the degree of engagement may be less or more, but uh, uh, we provide a combination of skilled manpower down to an end-to-end -end managed services as a service option to the customers. Give me an example of the, of the kind of service a company could outsource then how, and how it would help them. Take an example of a, an organization that has been traditionally running a certain technology, let's say 2G, and then gains a WiMAX license. Now one way that they would have to do is set up a WiMAX team, a WiMAX program management office, a WiMAX uh, service facility and so on and so forth. So a new technology relevant infrastructure within the organization. or get someone else to do all of that at their cost and expense and get your network WiMAX ready so that you can start serving your end subscribers. And this is an example and this is a model adopted by one of the largest operators in India where we are a managed services partner to them for uh, a fixed WiMAX solution. So we manage a little over 2,000 sites from our network operating center with our people and our resources, our spares and change management capabilities, our processes. And what they get is a WiMAX ready city where they can start serving their subscribers. So they're happy to go to the subscriber and say, I have launched in Nagpur, you know, come and join my service. And they didn't have to worry about creating that entirety of people, training them, you know, ensuring that they are fully occupied and that entire work is outsourced. It strikes me this is a way of companies um, expanding quickly and leapfrogging and keeping up with technology. Is this what's behind it? Uh, largely, yes. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, operators choose this model is to deburden themselves from making 
serious choices that are time consuming and painfully expensive to make. So if someone else can make it and still take, share the risk of it, wow, what a beautiful business model. Someone else is doing it and putting money also in the game and is ready to give me a performance outcome, why must I not look at it? Are people reluctant to take this idea on board? Is there opposition to it in operators? I think any kind of change brings resistance. And uh, those with the traditional mold of thinking and, and decision making would find it painful to let go. It's in human nature. You, know, you don't easily give up what you have, even if it's an old car. The same thing happens when you are a, a, an organization that has a large number of people, that has some traditional mold within which you've been doing business. It's not easy. And therefore, we have to work both in terms of giving a cost optimization play at a business layer of decision making and being very sensitive in terms of understanding the human needs of people who ultimately have to then start doing something else or start being reskilled to, to then find fitment into an organization of a different role in a different domain. So that's not easy sometimes. Mr. Chandra, that was very interesting stuff. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a great pleasure, pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you.